All right, so binary search. What did people think of this challenge? Quite confusing. <laughs> yeah, this is a tough one. So it's a very common interview, uh, interview and application question. So the idea is you get a sorted array of in, uh, strings or integers. Let's just worry about integers now. So for example, a sorted list of 1,000 unique values between 1 and 10,000. And we need to be able to search through it for a specific integer. And so the idea is, all right, we're searching for a value number defined in a search set of sorted values. We find the middle value that we'll call the middle value. If the number defined is equal to it, then we found it. If it's less than that, we have to split it in half and repeat on the new subset. And if it's greater than that, we need to repeat it with the other half. And we keep on doing this until we either find the number or we return negative one if it doesn't exist. So this is something that's definitely possible to do uh, iteratively, but uh, recursively is a very common way to do that. I'm just looking for some, there's something I found before that I'm, all right. Uh, all right, never mind. So what I was doing was looking for, I know there's like a visualization of sorting algorithms on YouTube, uh, but I couldn't find one that was just uh, sorting out a uh, binary search. So I'm not going to do that this time. And also it has really obnoxious audio. So don't worry about it. All right. So listen to that. <laughs> yeah, the one that says, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's, it's awful. You'll if you look for a sorting algorithm uh, visualization on YouTube, you'll find it, and it's it's not great. Anyway, so uh, should we cover this one in JavaScript or Python? Well, we did the last uh, last lesson in Python, so how about we do this one in JavaScript? So again, I'm just going to focus on uh, getting our driver code to work just because I, uh, you know, again, don't want to spend too much time going over, over, the, uh, over the spec code just because you all know how to do that. All right, so first off, before we even start the pseudocoding, let's do our base case, base cases and recursive cases. So the readme already uh, already tells us uh, the, what the base cases are, right? What are they? So one of your base cases could be like if the if the number if the number is equal to like whatever the middle value is of the array. Mm -hmm and return um, that number. Yeah, so, if no, so one of them is if number equals middle value of array. And then the other one is if number doesn't exist. And then our recursive case, we actually have two recursive cases here, right? What are they? Uh, so if uh, so, if number um, equals middle value of the array, uh, of array, that's the base case. Um, and then, uh, if number doesn't exist, uh, that would be another base case. And then a recursive case would be um, you've looked at the middle number; it is not uh, your target number. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the recursive case would mean you're going to need to make a recursive call to restart the function. Yeah. Um, with a uh, array that has been split in half mm -hmm. um, if the number is so if the number so if you have that middle number and your target number is less than that middle number then you're going to want to take the left half of that array yep so, um, and then the opposite case you take the right half mm -hmm. if the yep. target number is greater than the middle number yeah so the other rec recursive cases would be if it's greater than or less than so if number is greater than middle value and number is greater is less than middle value. 
So if either of these two conditions are met, then we know we'll have to uh, recurse. All right, so let's do some actual pseudocoding now. Uh, what's our first step before we do anything else? To make sure that the array is sorted. Yeah, because we can see in one of our examples, we, we can't guarantee that we'll be given a sorted array. So sort array smallest to largest. And there's all, all sorts of algorithms that will do that for us already. So we don't really need to worry about that. All right, then what's our next step? You have to like initialize your start and end. Initialize start and end. Uh, could you elaborate on that, please? Um, like the, the beginning of your array, we had, uh, or uh, basically how we did it. Yeah, we initialized our start and end variables, and then we actually did a while loop, but. Um. All right, so maybe before we get any further, we should talk about what our uh, arguments are for this function are going to be, because we weren't given any by default. So we know that one of them is going to be you know, so we'd say define function. Arguments are, we know there's going to be the number to find and array. Do we want any other arguments? Maybe one with a default, val default value. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I missed that. Yeah, we initialize our, our array and our number as well. Mm-hmm. Define a I'm sorry? I guess you could okay. set one to found. Um, now that you set it that way, that you could have a default value that's equal to false to say that if it can't go through the entire array and, it, and if it can't find anything, and if that value is false, then it can return negative one. Yeah, so we different. could do a, a, fun, a variable that like, tells us whether or not we found it. But kind of the big fundamental problem with this uh, function is if we were just trying to turn, it was just returning a Boolean, it would be pretty easy. Because we could just cut that array down to size until we get either find it or we don't. But in this case, we're trying to return not just whether or not we found it, but its original position in the array. And to do that, we can't really uh, return, we can't mutate the array. We need to, it has to remain its original size. So one thing that may help here is if we define a variable as an argument with an, op an optional argument to figure out, OK, how to determine that. Could we set a, like a default variable that's equal to an actual copy of that array, like an immutable copy? That that's one thing we could do. Uh, what I was thinking, and this is the way I did it at least, is having a two of them actually or well let's see i'm thinking of two of them now different ones so one thing we actually can do well let's see here let me think sorry i've just i had two ideas in my head and i'm like well which one is is it uh yeah let's do it this way so two optional arguments minimum and maximum. And I'm going to set maximum equal to none to start out with. And so essentially, I'm going to have these two pointer variables that I'm going to figure out that are going to determine what the range I'm going to be looking through is. And there are many other ways to, de to do this. This is just one. All right. So I'll kind of demonstrate as we go through this what, I'm, what these are for. So first off, we need to say, OK, find middle index of array. We know we need to do that. And then we say if array middle index equals our number defined, we return the middle index. So that's one base case down.
right? And then we could say if array middle index is greater than our number defined, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say return, what did we call this binary search with our, so we're going to give it number defined an array. And if it's greater, that means our new minimum value is going to equal the middle index. And the maximum is going to equal the length of the array. And then if our array middle index is less, I got these backwards, is less than that. No, sorry, I always get this part confused. Less than number to find. I'm going to return binary search number to find array. And then the minimum is going to be zero, is going to be the minimum, whatever the minimum was. And the maximum is going to be our middle index. Am I making any sense here? I feel like I'm kind of rambling a bit. Is it middle index or do we have to subtract one from or add one to? Because I know when we did our solution, we had to add one to the middle index um, when we reset it, you know, when we mm -hmm. reset the, uh, the min and the max. We had to add one, say if it was, um, you know, the first case there that your cursor's on, we would have to add one to. Like that? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think it's because the reason we did that is because when we, we divided the, uh, the array in half with integer division, then we took the floor of mm -hmm. that, and that gave us one. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah, so by adding one to that, we can make sure that we're not caught in an endless loop of rounding down again and again. All right, so I'm going to try this. I think this. you need uh, to switch the, the greater than and less than. I think, I think you're right when you change yeah. it. All right, <laughs> thank you. OK, so let's start coding now. So first off, we need to sort our array. Well, we need to add these here. So I'm going to have number to find with array. And I'm going to say min with a default value of 0. And we don't know what the maximum is going to be yet. So I'm going to say mat is equal to null for now. And I can, uh, once again, kind of do that if max equal equals null with two Ls, then we'll say that max is now equal to array dot length minus one. So that way we, we the first time it's called, we'll make sure that max is equal to the length of the array. Or actually, I guess, could we do that up here because this is JavaScript? Array dot length, would that work? Does anyone know? Because I don't. We didn't do it that way, but I think, I think it'll work. I think it'll work. Yeah, I'm, I could just say, you know, console.log. log max here and see what happens when I run it. Okay, yeah, looks like that works. So minus one is what we want it to be, but okay, cool. That saves us time. All right, so then we need to sort our array. So we could say, Array equal, we actually, it's a, we can just say array.sort, like so. And that should uh, do it in place. So we don't need to assign it to a new variable in JavaScript. So first we sort it. And then we need to find the middle value. 
So how do we find the middle index of our, how do we say, you know, let middle index equal, how do we find that? So we have a minimum number and a maximum number, which when we start out are going to be zero and the last thing of the array. So in order to find the both of those, we need to uh, add the two numbers together, divide by two, and then round down. That'll give us the middle number between them. So I believe we can just do math.floor with min plus max divided by two. And that should give us the middle index. All right. And then we can say, all right, if array middle index equals our number defined, then we just return middle index. All right, and then we can say, all right, if our array middle index is greater than number defined. So looking through our example here, if we're looking for four, we start with three. That means we only want these numbers here. So then we want to return our function, which is called binary search with number defined and array. And then our minimum is going to be middle index plus one, is what we said. And the maximum is going to be whatever it is that we leave it at. All right. And then we do the opposite here. So if the array middle index is less than the number defined, and we return binary search with number defined, Oop, number array. And then in this case, the minimum is going to stay where it was. And the maximum is now going to be our middle index. All right, what questions do you have so far about this solution? Um, no, could I just, uh, could I see like uh, your lines like one through 10 for just a second? Uh, actually, it's your, uh, your, the, your uh, parameters for the function. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, our default values for minimum is zero. Our maximum is the length of the array minus one. So that gives us the last index. And so we say, OK, if that happens, that that. So we have one of our base cases. We don't have the other base case, which is uh, what happens if it's not there. The question is, how do we know? And in this particular case, so how would we know that we got to the end of this, knowing that we are like we're kind of moving in our markers closer and closer together every time? How do we know that it'll be that we didn't find it? If your middle index is. I'm sorry, Emma? You got cut out there. Oh, if your middle index is. Yeah, you keep on cutting out just as you're about to say what it is. The most inconvenient times. If your middle index is zero. So if middle index is zero. Uh, so that'll happen if we're going down, but if we're moving up, then the middle index might be something else. But one thing we do have is minimum and maximum. We know they're going to be keep on moving closer together. So essentially, if they are equal to one another, <clears throat> excuse me, if they're equal to one another and middle index does not, we didn't find the middle index, that means we've checked every single value. So right here, I'm going to say if min equals max, we'll return negative one. 
So the idea is, all right, if we take a look at here, so we're going to, we're looking for five, or let's say we're looking for six. So we know that our middle index will be three and we know six is greater than three. So we'd set our minimum to four and our maximum would still be five. And then we'd say, okay, our middle value here would be four. So we'd say, okay, try this again, plus one. So that would give us our minimum value of five and a maximum value of five and the middle value of five. And those, uh, so that doesn't equal that, but we know that, okay, if we reach the point where middle of index doesn't equal number defined and the minimum and the maximum are the same, that means we're not gonna find it. Uh, is what I'm saying making sense? Well, okay, let's test it out then and see if it works. Oops. No, okay, it did it anyway. All right, we have a problem. It did not work, except for one of them. So we tried to find the first one, it should equal zero. It didn't get that. Okay, so we have a problem. Let's uh, figure it out bit by bit. So I'm going to say first off, okay, what did we return instead of zero? Negative one. So it looked for one and didn't find, it said it couldn't find it. All right, so now we need to figure out, okay, what's going on here? So what I'm gonna do is every time it runs, I'm going to console.log my array, or I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna console.log my minimum and my maximum to make sure they're what I expect them to be. All right, so uh, first time I have a minimum of zero and maximum of four, like it's supposed to be. Okay, that's interesting. So now it says I have a minimum of three and a maximum of four. So it was try it should have been looking for the smallest number, but it looks like it was looking for the biggest number. So maybe I have these backwards, like so. Oh, hey, that looks better. All right, so I'm going to put this back the way it was, equals zero. I'm going to uncomment these. Oh, OK, I've got trues, true, 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 true. OK, so once again, I got confused by which uh, what direction these characters are supposed to point. But it looks like we've got a working solution here. What questions do you have about how I solved this? Did anyone have a completely different solution to this that they'd like to share? It was kind of messy. Andrew and I did it with an uh, object. With an object? All right, I heard a few people talking at once there and didn't get anything super clear. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say on, on ours, we uh, it got pretty messy, but we were creating like, smaller and smaller arrays and kind of doing similar logic, but we had to keep track of the index of the original the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like the way that th this one's a lot cleaner and you just keep the same array the whole time. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Uh, I've seen a few students who did this with an offset value. So essentially they did cut the array to smaller and smaller size, but kept track of how far away they are every time. So at the end they return like this array value plus this offset number. Yeah, that's a better way of explaining what we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's definitely a totally valid solution. Uh, like I'm not even sure, I wouldn't say that even my solution is the best one. This is just the one that makes the most sense to me personally. All right, what other questions do you have about binary search or does anyone have like, you know, have a much better idea of how to solve this than this, because I don't doubt that it exists. Is, am I missing where it's being sorted? Right here. All right. So every time, is this running the sort again? 
Yeah, it is, it is sorting it every single time, which is probably not the most uh, efficient way to do things. As you get into much larger arrays, it's going to have to run that every single, single time. So I'm sure there's a way to check if the array has already been sorted. But that, I think that would still, you'd have to be checking for if it's sorted every single time, which would still kind of be inefficient. So I'm not sure if there's a more efficient way to do it besides sorting it every single time you run the function. Um, can you clarify where we initially um, defined our arguments? We we uh, said max was equal to array dot length minus one. Yes. But then in our pseudo code in the if statement, um, max was just equal to the length of array. So what, what I guess the length of array versus array dot length minus one. Yeah, uh, max should have been minus one because when you say the length of the array that'll tell you how many numbers are in the how many values are in the array which isn't the same as the final index the final index is always minus one minus the length because you start counting at zero that's what i thought i just want to make sure yeah so that was me not explaining very well in my pseudo code hey Can no you i just try did... running sorry uh, let's do Matthew and then Emma here. So just a cautionary tale. We ran into the array.sort method mm -hmm. sorts by the first digit. So if you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, 12, 13, 14, it would sort 1, really? 11, 12, 13. Interesting. Let me so we, add, we added some additional numbers to the large array, and we were getting really weird data, and that's what we finally figured out. Oh, cool. I actually didn't know that. I Yeah, it was news to us. Yeah. So we so, actually had to... Yeah, look, I'm looking at the documentation now. It says, by default, the sort function value uh, sorts values as strings. So if we wanted to do this to make sure it's doing it alpha nu alphanumerically, we would do something like this, a and b, and then we return a minus b. I believe that would make it so that it's, alpha nu it's numeric instead of uh, so I did, you know, 21 here. That should put 21 above nine, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Yeah, that's that's a solution we came up with as well. Yeah, so essentially when you can use, give the sort function an algorithm to say, okay, how is this sorted? And we're saying, and the return A minus B there says, okay, we wanna make sure that we wanna give the largest ones after the, set, the smaller one. Good catch. I wouldn't have thought of that. All right, and Emma, you had a question, right? Can you try running it with an array that has two elements? Has two what? Just two elements in oh, it. Just, just two? Two numbers. Sure. Yeah, so we could say console.log binary search. And let's say we gave it one and an array of one and two. So we should get a value of zero here if it's working correctly. And if I give it two, it should give me a value of one. And if I give it a value of three, I should get a negative one. All right, it appears to be working correctly. I had a weird edge case where if you try to get the middle index from something that has two in it, um, when you do length minus one, it becomes equal to one. And then when you divide that by two, it becomes equal to 0.5. And the math.floor changes it to zero. Uh, and then when you, well, we were using slices, so maybe that's why it was. That could be it. Yeah, but that's a good, it's a good thing to keep in mind is that you do get edge cases like this where you have just one, just zero. Let's see what happens if I give it an array of just one value. Okay, it still works here, but if I give it one, let's see if that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what you just told us is the value of expanding your test coverage for, uh, you know, edge cases like an array, of a very small array besides just one with five values, we'd want to make sure it works with an array of just one or two values as well.
All right. What other questions do you have about binary search? All right, in that case, uh, let's take a 10 minute break. So be back here at 10.03 and we will get into today's lecture. 